I'm here to make a video. Mostly I want to make a video because I think I have amazing camera presence. I'm making a video because I think I have something to share that really requires gestures. That's what people do on YouTube, right? Did you think my voice was going to be this high-pitched? <sighs> so, a lot of people cook at home, and they might never have cooked in a restaurant, and their experience of cooking supplies is Target and Walmart, and those places are great, and then when you really want to splurge, you go for Williams-Sonoma, that kind of thing, Crate and Barrel, whatever. Here's a big secret. Professional chefs don't even use that stuff. The cooking tools that you would use in a professional kitchen are usually way less fancy, way less complicated, way more sturdy, and they usually just fulfill their job like they're supposed to. I work in a professional kitchen and I cook at home almost every day. I think that I can bring a pretty unique perspective and tell you a few things about professional kitchen tools you might never have known. You're welcome. Tongs! Okay, these are some tongs that are your standard kitchen tongs, and I will tell you the reasons they aren't good enough and you should have higher standards. So here are your standard tongs. Pretty normal, pretty average. You could get these anywhere. Uh, the thing that I find so annoying about them is that this slidey thing is meant to make your life better because it's supposed to hold them together so you can put them in a drawer and they won't, you know, do this in the drawer. But then when you're using them, you're like, okay, tongs, I really need tongs right now. And then, oh my god, this thing is pinching you so hard and you can't let go because you're obviously doing something with the tongs in the food. And the more you try to let go, the more it rides up and pinches them more and more. So then you need your other hand to come save yourself from the tongs. So well, usually to deal with that problem, I pull that metal thing off um, so that then they're just free tongs and they don't pinch you anymore. But then you realize that by pulling that thing off, you've already almost mostly broken them. They become all wobbly. Uh, and then once they're open, you realize the inside is all rusty and it's about to snap apart anyway. What you need tongs like this. Now these are some of the smallest tongs you can even buy in a professional restaurant store, but they are huge and better. They have this rubber thing so that you can't really get pinched. They have this so that you can hang up a thing that I don't have yet and hang them there. Uh, they're also really strong. You could pick things up like, oh this cake pan's really hot and I just have to move it right now. Or like, oh my gosh, I need to stir something. I need to stir something a lot. And so it's kind of like an extra hand that can't get burned. And it's a claw. Second thing, the spider. Uh, I really love the spider. It's one of my favorite kitchen tools. Uh, when I bought this, I thought it was far too large. And now I think it is not nearly large enough. I'll hold it up the way the makeup people do. Note. A spider. The whole point of this thing is to fish things out of hot liquid. So let's say that you are frying something and you need to get it out. You can just go like, oh, it's drained, and you can put it on a little rack. Um, it's also really great for pasta, not long skinny pasta, obviously, but uh, like bow ties or anything small. Or chetti, I use this for a lot because. Say I need it to be strained, but not too strained, and I'm in a big hurry, and I just want to get it straight from the pasta pot to the pan, and go like this, scooped it out, drained it a tiny bit, and then I'm done. This thing's great. I don't know why it's called a spider. You should get one. Oh, yes. Here you are. Giant cookie sheet, or as the professional people say, sheet pan. Uh, this thing is great. It's about double the size of your normal at-home sheet pan. <laughs> Need french fries. Uh, let's see. Reasons you should have it. 
It's big. Mm. Why do I think you should have a giant sheet pan? Because, okay, you have a typical cookie recipe, and it's space your cookies two inches apart at least. That leaves you room for maybe six cookies. Twelve cookies. Bam. Also, um, if you have recipes like mine that are like, we're going to make giant cookies, put them at least four inches apart, then you can still make six cookies instead of like two. <laughs> Next thing, plastic wrap. Restaurant plastic wrap might be my favorite item on the list. Uh, restaurant plastic wrap is really great because it actually works. Plastic wrap has one job, seal things and stay sealed. And most plastic wrap that you get at home just doesn't do it. Let me demonstrate. Here is some store-bought at-home plastic wrap. I'm not going to show you it because I don't want to be like mean to the actual brand of it. They all do it, it's not just this one. Okay, here's problem one. You can't even... Here I am struggling to even get it out of the container. Okay, it is all ripped up. Ugh. Why do you even plastic wrap any... Oh my god. Okay, I'm ready. Here is me trying to get this plastic wrap out. I got it. It's immediately stuck to itself. Irreparable damage. Then you spend all this time trying to unstick it from itself. It's the only thing it really sticks to. I did manage to get it to seal a bowl. Sort of. It's still pretty difficult compared to what I will show you. The real problem is when you wrap plastic wrap around an item, like here, I'm trying to roll it up into a ball. Swan! Let me demonstrate with plastic wrap. Or as the Brits say, cling film. Here I am, getting the piece off. So easy. I can seal this up. No funny business, no weird layering techniques. Just quick, it's sealed. Anyone try that hard? I tried this earlier with water. You could put water in it, turn it upside down, and it works. Oh yeah, check this out. Roll it up into a ball. It stays mostly. Here's another one. Our wedding cake. It seals in the freezer. This is wrapped in loads of cling film, as the Brits say. Um, a couple of layers of plastic bags just for good measure, but the cling film totally seals it in the freezer. I'm not even worried about this thing getting frost and freezer burn. So you can reuse it a lot, because I know you're thinking, why would you recommend that I put more plastic into the environment and destroy the earth? But actually I think I'm using far less plastic wrap than I would. Look at that, it's reusable. So sometimes I can have something wrapped up in the pantry, a bag of pasta maybe, and then I use up the pasta and I don't throw it away. I leave it out and then I wrap up Parmesan cheese or something else. Is that all my points? Oh yeah, did you see that? I just unstuck it from itself so easily. Oh, other reason. Great dispenser. It is dangerous though. See, it says sharp edge got a warning about that somewhere too. Oh, do not dispense above waste. Last one, the scales. So it took me a long time to decide to start using the scale, or as they say on the continent, the scales. I don't know if they say it on the continent. What's the continent? Europe? The main reason that I didn't want to get this is because it cost about $20 and I already had a whole drawer of all of this, you know? Why would I start weighing things when I already... Um, here are some cool tips. Definitely get a digital one because I had one that wasn't digital and I already gave it away. And it was the worst. It's just not very accurate. It kind of does this like an old-fashioned scale. Uh, this one's great. You can change it from grams to ounces with that little button right there. 
If you want to impress your friends, you should use a scale. If you want to make all of your baking instantly better and more accurate, you should use a scale. If you already use a scale, you should use a scale. Here's something you might want to know. People in other countries have been doing this for a while, and we're definitely behind. Oh, America! The reason you should start using the scales, um, it's like situations like this. So you want to make, um, you've got a recipe for chocolate chip cookies, and you want to use whole wheat flour instead because you're feeling really healthy or something. And you make the cookies, it calls for one cup of white flour, you add one cup of whole wheat flour, and they're disgusting and tough, and it's probably because of the whole wheat flour that you added. So to deal with that, instead of making the cookies 20 times and adjusting it, you could see how much one cup of all-purpose white flour weighs, and then weigh out wheat flour to the same amount. Add that to your cookie recipe, and I think you'll be much closer to what will probably be bleh, probably be your final recipe. Okay, so one thing I left out, where do you get all of these? You can get pretty much all of these items at a local restaurant supply store. You could just Google that, restaurant supply, and go to it. You will want to check and make sure that they don't require you to be a business to shop there. Some of the places require a membership card. Also, you can just get them online. A lot of this stuff is way cheaper if you order it online anyway. So I'll list a couple of links down at the bottom along with the brands that I use. <sighs> a lot of people seem overwhelmed by the knives situation, so I'm going to do another video if you are interested in the basics of what knives I think that a home chef needs and where to get them, how much you really need to spend on them, how to care for them, how you can tell if they're actually sharp. If you don't care about that at all, I might post the video anyway. Enjoy your kitchen supplies! Can you believe this was free? Yay, the internet!